Keith steps back to the table with ball in hand. With the four ball near the side of the pocket, five in the side pocket practically. Six ball right at the center of the table. And he's just taking his time to make sure that he doesn't overrun his position. As he's looking at uh, a five in the side, a six in the side, followed by a seven ball in the corner. Okay. He's going to have to decide whether to achieve his position with draw or with follow. It looks like he's choosing to draw back. Okay. And with that position, he'll be playing the seven in the corner, upper right-hand corner. And that allows Keith to go up one more game. The players are taking a short break. When they return, Keith will be breaking. Okay, we've got uh, Keith and Alex on the break. In the booth here, i got Jeff with me and Libby. Libby, who's quiet. Jeff, oh, by the way, this is Spoon. Jeff, uh, so far, um, it, it seems like a, an interesting match between uh, Keith and, and Alex. Um, what are your thoughts on it? Well, they've been trading games, so uh, at this rate, it's going to go down to the wire. Uh, however, because of the long race and because Keith appears to be picking up two games for every one that Alex has been picking up over the last uh, 30 minutes or so, Alex is going to need to step up his game a notch in order to be able to in order to be able to uh, to, to finish this round uh, uh, ahead of Keith. But both players are playing pretty good. There's just, as you know, uh, seven balls a difficult game, and one mistake, the, the, the next thing you know, you're, you're turning over the rack to your opponent. Okay. And there have been quite a few turnovers. Well, uh, keep in mind, it's still a race to 30. So yeah, that's true. Know. They're about the halfway point. Yeah, and um, it's alternating breaks, and uh, each player gets a, a safety per rack, and depending on how they use that, that can actually give them. An, uh, it can be an advantage or a disadvantage. Yes, it looks as if the alternating break has indeed helped, because both players. Uh, and probably, no doubt, uh, related to the t 
tough diamond table. Both players have been having a tough time getting a ball on a break. There have been a number of dry breaks, and that's contributed, I think, to why we have such a close score. Libby, yes. what do you think so far? I mean, you've been, I see you've been keeping a close eye on that match. I have been, but I think it can go either way since they're racing to 30. Do you think the break has been a factor in this match? I haven't really watched um, a seven ball break. H has any, uh, I know from, from watching Keith, he has a pretty good break. How, how is he breaking in this match? So far, I haven't seen either of them make a ball on the break, though. Uh, right, there have been very few uh, uh, ball on the break uh, opportunities to allow the player to stay at the table. It's been pretty much quite a few dry breaks, and as a result, everyone's had a chance to, uh, to take a game, which is why I think the game is, the, the score has been so close. Uh, last rack was the exception where uh, uh, last minute uh, Alex had a ball uh, go in on the break, but he used uh, that opportunity to play a safe. Right. And the net result, uh, Keith, Keith got back to the table anyway. So it's been equal chance at the table for both players, mostly due to the uh, high number of, bro of dry breaks. Have they been taking advantage of the, the, the safeties? That one safety, specifically? Well there's, well, there's been a lot of turnover. Um, uh, I'd, I'd say so far everyone's had an equal chance at the table. But here we have Keith getting ready to break now, so we'll get another chance to see if, he's have, if he can have better success with the break. Mm. Okay. And just, just like most of the other breaks so far this afternoon, he came up he came up dry. You know, it's funny because, um, and you would, uh, you'll attest to this, Libby, he didn't hit that pretty hard. Right? He, he, mm -hmm. barely, he barely smacked the ball, so I thought he would hit it a little bit harder than that. They're playing a little conservative, I would think, right? It looks like it. But then again, they've been playing since 11.40 they started. Yes. They could be getting tired already. <laughs> well, they have a long way to go. Yeah. Because it's this is just day. the first of three formats for today, and the other two formats, they still have to go to 30 points. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Now, for our viewers out there, in, 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 in this format of uh, seven ball, when you miss, it's ball in hand to your opponent. You're allocated one safety per rack. After that, if you miss your shot, then it's ball in hand. Yeah, and one push. Thank you, Mir. One safety and one push per rack. Well, we may see we may be seeing a safety from Keith unless he's willing to play this combination two seven. Yeah, it looks like he's going to do that. Okay, he, he did go, he did go for the combination and as and he's rewarded and putting a little bit of distance between him and Alex with the score now Alex ten, Keith fifteen. This is the largest lead that we've had so far this match. But because of the alternating break format, Alex comes back to the table, and we'll see if he has better luck. Notice Alex is breaking uh, from the other side uh, from Keith. He did have success with this break before, putting in the three ball. But this time, much like uh, most of the breaks we've seen today, he came to dry. Hmm. Now he's, I think he's going to opt to push here. Well, there's nothing tied up, so he may choose to tie something up with his push. Okay. Well, he did and, not. And actually, he did not, so I would find it difficult to think that Alex would give this one back. Right. Well, maybe, you know, I mean, the two ball is is down table and he has to go through the pack right here well, he what's that a four ball well it's a good safety opportunity if he chooses to take it okay. 
Okay, so... And so he did play safe, but there does appear to be a window to see at least part of the one ball. Question is, is Keith going to take? Is he going to go for the uh, one in the corner? Yeah, I think he's going for it. Okay. He's not going to utilize his safety right now. Keith has been shooting um, quite, quite good recently. And with this format, he understands the the value of holding on to the safe, especially being that his his opponent just uh, used up his safe. So he's going to take his time. Well, it's a good point. You only get one. You only get one per rack, so yeah. you need to hold on to it if you can. Now, with none of the balls tied up, I think he'll use a little draw to pass to get past the six. Oh, oh actually, that's that's even, even better. Even better. Even better. Now, he doesn't have he doesn't have an angle on this. He might have to create something. Hit the rail, come back out, and probably play. Well, that's that's true. This will be interesting to see his approach. And unfortunately, he's giving the table back to Alex after having missed the four ball. Alex now, of course, has a much better angle to come three rails in order to get shape for the five than Keith had. Okay. Or I guess we can call that four rails. And again, with natural position after shooting the five, should be able to come at least one rail to get shape for the six. He may have overrun his position a little bit, but I think he's still in good shape here. He should be able to cinch this ball in the corner. And once again, he did achieve the shape that he wanted. Unfortunately, he did not pocket the six ball. Goodbye. Giving Keith ball in hand and natural, uh, or looks like natural one rail position to get shape on the seven. Okay. And that's pretty good position for him. may prove to be a critical error for Alex. As this seven ball now gives Keith a six game lead over Alex with Keith having won the, the, the last six uh, racks, bringing the score Alex 10 and Keith 16 with Keith breaking. Okay, um, Jeff, we have Mike Pratt here. He's gonna step in for a few minutes. So, uh, Mike Pruitt, one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, contestants in uh, the Mega Bucks Masters uh, Marathon. Uh, Mike, can you tell me how you feel so far? Fatigued right now, to be honest with you. Um, playing seven ball, it's a uh, it's a little different from everything else because um, you're it's it's about trying to run out, but you really it's more like um, tying up balls, and um, you know because you get ball in hand for every miss, you only get one save per rack. So um, you would think it goes quick, but it actually doesn't. So um, it's just a lot of mental exertion. Yes. 
you know. Yeah. So so that's what I'm feeling right now. So I'm up in my match though, but I had a huge lead. I had an eight game lead, and it's down to three right now. So I just said, let me just take a timeout. You know, making silly mistakes. So I said, let me just stop right now. Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it, and, and you point out one of the benefits of, uh, I think, Megabucks, uh, uh, Amateur Pool League versus other leagues, uh, having the, uh, the longer races. Yeah. Uh, so that there is some opportunity for people to come back. At, uh, in your opponent's case, who is closing in on a lead, but it does also give you some opportunity to regroup and to uh, refocus the game. And, uh, and get back into the match. So Definitely, definitely. Um, and, and like you said, it's a longer race. So uh, if you get down early, just like my opponent was down and now he's starting to uh, come back, you have that opportunity. Uh, whereas if it's a shorter race, um, that, that can it's a coin flip. But uh, when it's longer, you know, you don't have to, you know, if you're down by three or four racks, you don't worry because it's going to 30. If it's, you know, you know 10 to uh, 8, a 10-7, you know, you don't worry as much. Right. Whereas if it's a race to 11 and you're down 8-5, uh, then that's something to worry about because yes. it's about to close yes. in. So. Yep. Well, as it turns out, there are very few leagues that uh, that play seven ball. Yeah. And how do you how do you feel about the, the, the variety of games that uh, are being offered in the uh, yeah, in this tournament? Well, obviously that's um that's the benefit of the league. Um, it's not just one, uh, you know, it's not just three, the three basic disciplines, eight, nine, and ten. Um, there's other disciplines, the straight pull, there's um, there's the seven ball, you know, and, and obviously some people have to learn it if they never played it before. Um, but then there's also one pocket, which they have, which is going to really test everyone. Um, so if people that don't know the rules in one pocket or know how to play, uh, it would definitely be a, uh, a, a, ch a test there. But it brings people back to understanding the game and doing their homework to try to see um, how they can compete and what advantages they can get. So that's where all the videos and the YouTube and things like that come in handy. Uh, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. And I certainly think that um, uh, for amateurs uh, looking to expand their game, there's probably no better opportunity than a league like this one where you get to play different games and not just eight ball and nine ball all the time. Absolutely. So we're, we're most certainly uh, uh, looking forward to seeing some of uh, seeing you later on in uh, some of the later rounds playing, showing us uh, how to play uh, some of these other disciplines. We'll, we'll see. Hopefully it's, uh, <laughs> it's a tough field out there. So uh, hopefully I can uh, get enough points in order to get to day two. So right now I'm on the right track, but uh, let's let's see where we go from here. OK, well, once again, I want to uh, thank you for your for your time. OK, and I look forward to uh, to seeing you on the feature table here. Definitely. Later. Thank you.
Levy. Yes. Okay, so we're live again. Uh, it looks like... It looks like... Keith is still ahead here. Mm -hmm. But before we get into this, let's take a... Let's pay some bills. Okay, so we have a couple of scores in, and one one group has already finished. Uh, Mike Jackson, Joshua Friedberg, Joshua taking it uh, thirty to eighteen in the first set. He now awaits the he now awaits uh, Steve Wade who's currently playing uh, versus Clayton Webster. Okay, for those of you out there, this is the, the Megabucks Masters Marathon. Uh, 16 players, six different formats. The guys will be playing uh, seven ball, eight ball, and nine ball today, all races to 30. Tomorrow, they'll start off with one pocket, straight pool, and then they'll end with 10 ball. In the booth here with me, I have Libby. Libby, what do you think so far? Joshua just wrapped up the first round versus uh, Mike Jackson. 
A score of 30 to 18. That was pretty fast. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I wasn't expecting anyone to finish this soon, to be honest. Uh, uh, no, I, would, I didn't expect that either. Um, Joshua has always been a formidable player. He 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 focuses, and he always uh, rises to the uh, to the challenge. You know. Yeah, he did well last year too. I think. Yeah, he did extremely well. In fact, if you were to go back and check out a couple of the reviews on uh, Go Play Mega, the the Facebook page, you'll see some highlights of him. I mean, he made some incredible shots. Uh, returning to the booth, we have uh, Jeff. So Jeff, I was just telling um Libby we uh, actually we were discussing Joshua Freeberg finished his match already. A score of thirty to eighteen and here he is right now. We're gonna ask him to come into the booth for for a quick minute. In fact, you know what we're gonna ask Michael Jackson first and then we'll have uh Joshua come in. Watching the match with Alex Ross, uh, we have with us one of the contestants in this tournament, uh, Mike Jackson, who just finished his uh, first round match in seven ball. Yeah, uh, Mike, how are you doing? I'm okay. It didn't go too well in the game. It didn't shoot well, but you know, I'm still in it. So, well, that's that's very important. <laughs> you know. The, the, uh, <laughs> At least you're still in it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, as long as you're in it, you have a chance. I got another chance at it. <laughs> well. Tough game, seven ball, though. Tough game. That's the first time I ever played seven ball, actually. Okay. That's my okay. first time. And and you're right. We were talking with uh, Mike Pruitt earlier about uh, seven ball um, because there's so much offensive pressure in yeah. that game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, you really have to shoot. You got to be a shooter in that game, man. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely favors people who uh, <laughs> like to shoot at everything on the table. <laughs> yes, know. it does. But some of the games in uh, the other formats uh, 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 down the road do require a bit more. Oh, um, uh, yes. Uh, a bit a more attention. Yes. You have to you have to think about what you, you can't shoot your way out of every situation. That's right. It's not going to be the same with the other games coming up, you know. Uh, that's right. And even though we have uh, eight ball coming up, um, by comparison, there's considerably more uh, a defensive strategy in that game. Uh, that's right. Exactly. Okay. So we certainly look forward to uh, to seeing you in some <laughs> of these uh, later rounds. How do you feel about um, uh, about a, a race to 30, though? Uh, and well, you know what? In seven ball, it was pretty fast. Mm -hmm. It was it, mm -hmm. the games went pretty quick, you know. Okay. So I think that game is, uh, it's not a bad game to play up until thirty. But okay, I don't. I, obviously, you don't want to play a race to thirty in one pocket. You can't. <laughs> I think he's got it up to ten already, right? I, I was surprised to see that actually. Yeah, I was like, it should probably be down to five. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but absolutely. That's what it is. It is what it is. Well, you do get that opportunity in the Mega Bucks Pool League to 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 shoot. Okay, it's yeah. not like some of these other yeah. uh, uh, tournaments where it's a race to three, and, and you yeah, know, and, and you're before done. you know it, you're out of <laughs> here. So we definitely look forward to seeing you later on yes, in the sir. match, and I hope you'll come back to the table and talk. With yes, us. I will. All right, thank you very much. Take care.
We also have uh, Josh Freeberg with us, who played in one of the uh, first round matches of seven ball. And uh, 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 Josh, welcome to the tournament. And uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, how do you feel about uh, uh, the first round, having having gotten through uh, the seven ball uh, so far? Um, well, I mean, it's definitely a tough round. You know, any race to 30 is a tough round, but playing seven ball, I, me personally, I've never played seven ball before. So, mm -hmm. you know, every time you miss, it's a ball in hand, stuff like that. That's that's all new and yes. it's tough. You know, every rack is like a chess game. You know, people say that about nine ball, but after playing seven ball just now, I don't think that way about nine ball anymore. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's good. Um, uh, and and I imagine uh, you've played in other leagues before now, but as you mentioned, this is your first time playing uh, seven ball in in a, in a league yeah. uh, a tournament. So uh, I think that's a, a kind of a good thing uh, uh, in a way. I don't know how do you feel about it. Oh yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I'm I'm not a big straight pool player, mm -hmm. but recently I started playing straight pool. And okay. After I'd say about three matches of straight pool mm -hmm. my eight ball nine ball and ten ball all changed right you know so right. any any new thing that you try in this game any any new game any new any new stance any new anything mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. is always helpful you know whether you want to use it or not use it it's always knowledge that you can use and have and it's always helpful, in my opinion. Well, sure, sure. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, every game uh, uh, that you learn has some things that are specific to it, but they also increase your understanding about games that you're already uh, that yeah. you're already familiar with, and gives you an opportunity to to take a new approach. So, um, uh, uh, how do you uh, how do you feel about uh, the competition? Uh, I believe you played uh, uh, Mike Jackson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. I think he's a great shot. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he's got a lot of skill on the table. Mm -hmm. um, he, just like myself, he wasn't used to playing seven ball. Right. You know, I think he told me that that was his first time also playing seven ball. Yes, yes, yes and it was. while he is a great shot, and I really do believe he is a great shot, he, he really didn't take advantage of the fact that, you know, there is only one safety. You know, he wasn't cautious about that. He would use his safety real early in the game a lot, or uh, you know, or the fact that if you miss, it's a ball in hand. Because of that, you really have to be careful of the shots that you make. You know, a lot of people, oh, there's only seven balls on the table. I can run this out. You know, I uh, see. that's, I mean, myself included. The first thing you think of, oh, there's only seven balls. They're all spread out. I'm going to run it out. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you if you mess up, forget about missing. If you mess up your position a little bit, then the whole thing changes. You know, yes. so the fact that you know, this game is really like if you have a couple of balls locked up, mm -hmm. you know, it's a give him ball in hand because he can't miss. You know what I mean? Right. So unless you have an unbelievable player who's who whose skill with the cue ball, moving around the cue ball is just unbelievable. Ninety percent of the time, if you have balls locked up, nobody's running out. You're going to play a chess game back and forth. So I think it's OK. Give him ball in hand, lock something up. Take your time and be patient. Wait till an opening, you know? Well, you certainly make a, a, a good point that while there are a lot of uh, great players that are playing in this tournament, okay, um, uh, uh, people who are uh, high-ranked in the uh, Mega Bucks Amateur Pool League, playing in some of these uh, uh, unfamiliar games, okay, adds a, like an additional level of uh, a difficulty, and it does require rethinking a lot of uh, the approach that's done, you know, to the table. Uh, uh, seven, seven ball is a game of uh, a tremendous uh, offensive pressure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it is, it is a game that does uh, allow for, um, for safety play of one type or another, even though it's limited. Right. And uh, you make a great point about the necessity to choose it wisely. Yeah. So we... Uh, we certainly look forward to seeing uh, uh, some more of your, uh, your play, okay, uh, in some of the other disciplines that are coming up. Uh, do you have any um, of the of the formats that are being offered in this tournament? Do you have a favorite? Um, well, if I had to pick a favorite, I would say it would be nine ball, only because that's the game I play the most. Mm -hmm. But 
I do enjoy nine ball. I do enjoy ten ball also. You know, uh, okay. just a little bit more difficult version of nine ball. Yes. And I'm getting into straight pool. You know, I happen to like straight pool very much. Okay. The uh, eight ball, I don't mind it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if if my opponent is is uh, a good shot, which over here they're all good shots, then I don't mind playing eight ball. You know, it's still a very strategic game. Yes. So I think eight ball is actually up next. Um, I mean, I, you know, I'm interested to, to play it and to see who I'm playing. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive about how I feel about the one pocket. Okay. You know, one pocket is it's a very difficult game. Right. And I don't play it very often. Okay. I think I would do all right, you know, if it was, say, a race to three or a race to four. Right. But judging that it's a race to ten, which is... Well, we're going to see, uh, uh, I guess, the limits of how much pool we can get in yeah. in one day yeah. playing uh, a race of 10 in, uh, in 10 pocket, yeah. uh, in one pocket, rather. But uh, we certainly uh, appreciate you spending some time with us, uh, telling us about how you feel uh, in the tournament. We look forward to having you come back uh, to the microphone to, to chat with us, and we also would like, uh, are looking forward to seeing you on the table uh, uh, perhaps in, uh, in one of the stream matches, and, and maybe even hopefully we can get you on uh, in your favorite game of the nine ball. Uh, I hope uh, so. Uh, uh, we're going to wish you uh, good luck in the uh, in the tournament. Thank you okay. very much, and uh, thank you uh, very much for uh, for taking some time with us. Not a problem. Okay, in the the match we're watching, Alex has managed to get a couple of games back uh, from what was beginning to uh, look like a, uh, a runaway race for Keith. Uh, go, uh, dropping the, the lead down from what was uh, eight games at one point down to, uh, uh, to a seven game lead. And with Alex uh, currently breaking, uh, if he can get his break on point, then he has a good chance of being able to uh, to address that uh, that lead and and see if he can cut it down some more. Unfortunately, for Alex, he has got broken dry, and that brings Keith back to the table. And if Keith can avoid the side pocket, then he has a good shot at the uh, the two ball with no balls tied up. Uh, uh, an opportunity to play uh, uh, to play the three ball right after shooting the two with no uh, no real effort. We're looking to see how he's going to approach getting shape for the three ball. It looks like he's going to try to to draw back in order to get uh, enough of an angle to play the three in the corner. Uh, in doing this, he's runs the risk of disturbing the six ball. So hopefully he doesn't uh, uh, tie something up as a result. Okay, he has managed to keep the six ball uh, free and clear in the middle of the table. And he's simply looking at the best way to... Uh, maintain shape on the five in order to keep extending his lead. So Keith is going to have to reach a bit in order to make this Five ball. Fortunately for him, with the six in the middle of the table, he does not have to struggle very much for position. Just focus on making the five, which I think is what he did. He focused on making the five. Did not so much focus on where the cue ball went. As a result, he now has a uh, pretty much a uh, a. A long distance shot here shooting from the jaws of the upper right hand corner pocket. 
but at least he's shooting into the center of the table with a chance to make the six. Okay. Now, unfortunate for Keith, he did not convert that six. That gives Alex ball in hand, shooting on the six ball with a fairly easy opportunity to get shape on the seven and chip away at his and chip away at the lead. Uh, Alex uh, overrunning his position for the side pocket, but still with a shot to be able to uh, play the seven ball in the corner. Again, we may be seeing the beginnings of some of a momentum shift where Alex has increased his score to 13 while Keith is still at 19. Keith has taken a short break, but is coming back to the table where he will be breaking. Looks like Keith has changed his break location some, breaking more from the center of the table. And interesting the number of balls that have wound up in the corner, upper left-hand corner of the table. Several chances to make a ball, but still managed to come up dry, leaving Alex to shoot, where Alex has chosen to play safe. We have another contestant from the Meg Bucks Masters Marathon on with us. I'll let him introduce himself. Yeah, this is um, David Gums, otherwise known as Bathroom Dave. Okay, and, and, and Dave, how do you feel about the, the uh, tournament so far? Oh, this is, uh, this is long. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, the one thing uh, about the... Megabucks uh, Masters Marathon is the fact that it's a marathon. Okay, the, these are long races, and uh, uh, that does provide some opportunity for people who are down uh, early on in a race, uh, the opportunity to be able to come back. 
okay. But it also does allow the opportunity for folks to run up uh, an extended lead. I understand, however, in your race that it uh, uh, that it was uh, pretty close. Um, a difference of about what four, four or five games. Four games. Right, right. So uh, uh, some of the people who played, uh, who we've talked to so far, are playing seven ball for the first time. Uh, is this your uh, first time playing seven ball? No, in, no. in competition. Um, Mega had a um, masters division at one time, so. I played in the Masters division, so I'm familiar with seven ball. Well, great. That that uh, uh, that certainly uh, uh, is an advantage uh, over people who play in other uh, in other leagues. Okay, the fact that you have at least uh, some exposure to uh, to seven ball. How do you like it as a game? You know, um, I liked it before. <laughs> After I played so what, what many do you mean, games. Before today. <laughs> before today. I liked it. You know what? There's uh, you really, seven balls are really a thinking game. You know, you got to know when to play your saves, right? And when to just tie up balls. And I think that's what, you know, that's how I was able to survive against um a strong shooter like Mike. Well, well, you 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 bring up a good point that hasn't been mentioned before because seven ball is thought of as a highly offensive game, but there is. There, there is some amount of thinking required because you have a limited amount of safeties uh, that you can play, a limited amount of pushes, limited amount of uh, safety shots you can call. You have to choose wisely when you can use them. Okay. So do you feel like it? Uh, and so I think you're, uh, I heard you say that you feel as if that has helped you some in, in, in your match? Well, absolutely. Because um, playing Mike, Mike is an extremely strong shooter. He can save you. Leave you long. Okay. And the key is um, that one safety that you have, you got to make it work for you. You can't do a safety unless you know you can run out the table. Right. So once he, um, if he gets bad on the safety with me, mm -hmm. I won't safe back. You know, I'll maybe push balls around or maybe tie up an another ball. And then if he misses again, that's when the safety comes into play. Okay. Okay, well, uh, uh, you're you're still in it, uh, even though even even though uh, this particular um, uh, round did not go the way that you had planned it, you still have an opportunity to make a an impact, uh, uh, and there are, are are other formats to be played uh, oh, yeah. of the of the different games that we have uh, eight ball coming up next, but some of the other formats. Do you have a uh, a favorite? Nine ball. Nine okay. ball is absolute favorite. Okay. So after we get past the the uh, eight ball round, which is coming up next, you have uh, an opportunity, I guess, to shine when uh, we start playing uh, nine ball. Okay. So we look forward to seeing you uh, uh, in the nine ball. Perhaps we can, hopefully, we can get you on the uh, uh, on the streaming table so that we can. Uh, 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 see firsthand just uh, uh, how nine ball uh, can be played, uh, the, the game of nine ball, according to uh, David Guns. Oh, absolutely. This is, um, today started off a little sketchy, but Mega Bucks is the, um, it's probably one of the best leagues out there because they, they offer all these games, whereas many other um, leagues, they only offer eight or nine ball. Yes, yes, that's a that's that's you know? an important fact. So to open up seven ball, straight pool, um, even though in this tournament he's having um, one pocket, I'm unfamiliar with one pocket, okay. but I'm hoping that he offers that into the league at some point. Yes, yes, I understand. There's been some talk about trying to find a way to incorporate it in the league. Just haven't just haven't found the uh, the right mechanisms yet. Yeah, I think he should just. I think he should just put everything in the rotation. Right now, we play on the regular league night. We play eight, nine, and ten. Mm -hmm. I think he should just put it all in there. Okay. You know. Okay. Well, that's certainly that's certainly uh, 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 one way to go about it. Uh, it does. It, it would indeed allow people to get familiar with other games and uh, to round to round out uh, your game. Uh, uh, so we look forward to. 
we look forward to seeing you uh, in some of the later rounds. Definitely. Okay? Definitely. Thank you very much for uh, spending some time with us. No problem. Keith back at the table. If he can avoid this, okay, looks like a bit of trouble here. Uh, uh, Keith successfully made his four ball, but he's hooked now behind the six and is gonna have to find a path to be able to make contact with the five or consider if whether or not there's a successful safety that he can play that will give him access to the table. I'm surprised uh, not to see uh, Keith pull out a jump stick. <laughs> Although he did make successful contact with the five ball he does set himself up to be able to, or he does set up uh, Alex with an opportunity to play the five in the corner and two real position on the six. So he did make contact, but we have to see if whether or not Alex is gonna be able to take advantage of this. So Keith manages to get back to the table after getting stuck on the, uh, on the five ball. He was able to hit it, utilize his safety, but he's giving the table back to Alex after having missed the six ball stretching over the table using the bridge. So if Alex can get enough, uh, looks like he's able to see the seven ball. <laughs> and Alex manages to convert another score. Bringing his score up to 14 and cutting the lead down to six. Alex 14 with uh, Keith having 20.
it back at the table. With ball in hand, hoping that he can continue his run to cut down the lead. Keith had a head of steam and managed to get up to 18 and then 19 uh, uh, with an eight point lead, but the lead now is down to, to six points, six, six games with Alex shooting at the table, trying to create an opportunity to cut that lead down to five games. Worried if the, whether or not the seven ball is going to interfere with his position on the five. Well, uh, the, the way it stands right now, um, and that that was a good shot. He could actually, he should he could actually pull back one here, but this 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 is a difficult shot. He needed to come back a little bit more to the center, but he can play this, you know. Now, would you roll this ball in or would you fire it? And remember, in a ball in hand, if he misses. I, I think you have to shoot at it. Um, and go, you can, and go across you the, can, the table I, and come back? Right, to real position. I don't think you can really rely on, uh, on, on rolling a ball that distance. Right. Well, he shot his it. Tables. He, he, he did pretty good. Yeah. But, you know, this he, one's going to be more of a challenge to hold the uh, hold I, the I think he's going to slide to the, to the right. Yeah, like that. Well, I think he got out of it because uh, that contact with the seven could have cost him uh, the game. And yeah. He was heading right to the corner. And, and this shot right here could be tricky. Uh, he could scratch in the side. What do you say about this, Libby? Mm. I think it depends on how he shoots it. So if it'll scratch. Oh. And ball in hand. Well, no doubt worried about uh, trying to hold the cue for the scratch. Right. May have contributed to that. Right. It does cost uh, Alex a game as the score is now 14 to 21. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, come. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Okay, so the score is now uh, 14 to 21. Alex is down by six points, that is. No, actually, that's seven points, right? Yes, Alex, uh, uh, Alex is behind by seven. Okay, he, um, he had a chance to uh, cut that uh, lead down to five, but uh, unfortunately, the missed opportunity on the seven cost him that one game, and now he's seven games behind with Keith needing just nine games in order to close out this round. Well, he still has an opportunity, but uh, it depends. I think it, it's going to come down to how he uses his safeties. Right here, he has a, an opportunity to to run a couple of balls and perhaps play a safe if he gets into trouble however he, the timing has to be right because I think uh, Keith didn't use his safe yet right mm. now Keith still has a, a safety available to him Alex has a good opportunity with this rack uh, because everything is out in the open and probably won't have to play a safety unless he uh, 
uh, gets in trouble on position. All right. I think he needed to come out a little bit uh, more on that three ball, though, because he's going to have to force the shot in, which he did. But the angle that he's left with is not that ideal. Well, this is going to be his toughest shot of the rack. Oh, wait a minute, he's on the four ball. He's on the four ball, and he's going to have to go up and down the table. Wait a minute. And wow. The looks like the uh, point uh, yeah. may have cost him the position he was looking to get. So with a uh, severe cut on the, on the five, and only three balls left on the table. Now, would you try to hold this ball, Libby, or would you go up table and come back down table for position on the six? Yeah, I don't see any sense in trying to hold this ball. Yeah, cut well, it in. If he's cutting it, then there's there is no holding it. Right. Okay. A cut like this, that cue ball is going to go. It's just going to fly. And here we go. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So he, he's he's got uh, some kind of shape on the, on the six ball, yeah. even with the love bump. I think he's going to try to play position for the seven, but I would just go straight across the, the the rail with this. I wouldn't even try to play position. I just need a shot on that seven. And I think this is the kind of shot that's been giving him the most trouble, where where he doesn't need to do anything with the cue ball, just kind of focus on making on on making his shot. Those have been the ones that have giving him the most trouble. Uh, looks like. And I Keith has just been uh, there to clean up the mess. Right. Uh, Keith has been the right person at the right time. And there he is for another, for another game, bringing his score up to 22. Now, earlier you had mentioned that uh, neither of the players were breaking uh, particularly good on this table. This table is a little bit tighter than the other tables, um, so it's it's a little tougher. And as you know, the diamond tables in general are, are, are pretty true to play on. You have to be accurate when you're playing on them. But in terms of the break, um, have they gotten any better? Well, you see Keith has changed his break position. And in fact, uh, both players are breaking from almost the same spot. Now, um, uh, they, he managed to get a good spread, but as you can see, the result is pretty much the same. Notice that the two ball in the upper left-hand corner, Yeah. when they've been breaking from that position, that's been the pocket that uh, everybody's been coming close to. Maybe it's just the difficulty of the table that they haven't been able to get something in. Now, you see this shot right now, that push, I, I don't like that push, you know, I don't like that push, because Keith could give him back this, <coughs> but he's going for it. Well, interesting, I haven't seen uh, did the any two situations did, did, where they've been handing stuff back. Did the two ball fall? It looks like it fell. Yeah. Uh, he's going to respot that ball back because it was there for more than, uh, I would say, more than five seconds. No, no, hold on. Let me go take care of that. All right. Okay. So we'll have to check with the uh, the weather service to find out if uh, there was an earthquake or something. Two ball, which was sitting in the corner for uh, for a good one, two minutes after um, after the break, all of a sudden fell into the pocket just as Keith was setting up to shoot. Requiring, requiring the tournament director to have to uh, respot the uh, two ball. Now, with the two ball respotted, Keith prepares to shoot. And while well, Keith attempted a uh, one rail bank in the side, uh, uh, having banked that ball short. Now gives Alex ball in hand, 
and an opportunity to um, to finish out this rack and close up his lead. Alex simply looking for a uh, a safe place in which to put the one ball with very little work for the uh, sh shape on the two. And he's chosen the same pocket that uh, Keith missed. Now this, this position may not be that easy for Alex. One, he's going to have to stretch, something I don't think he thought about when he set up the position. He's shooting with the bridge. And he's shooting at a ball that's deep in the pocket shelf. And with these diamond tables, you have to be true because if you, if you, uh, well, he did hit it. But when there are many times when I play a shot like that, and I, I forget that I'm playing on diamond tables, and I actually hit the cushion before hitting the ball. Yes. Yeah, because the diamond pockets are so deep. I, I remember uh, a couple of times I was playing with um, Mike Priot, uh, who's doing well in this tournament so far. And he had to remind me, you know, these, these tables play a lot different from the, the, the regular Brunswick tables. Okay, this may be one of the, uh, the better safeties uh, that Alex has played in this right. match. It certainly came up at a good time. Fortunately for him, he had a safety to play. Yeah. I believe Keith can hit this ball playing one or two rails. It's unlikely that he's going to be able to pocket the ball. So this puts this puts uh, uh, Keith in a awkward position. Okay. He chose an intentional foul, and I guess he. Without disturbing the uh, the three ball, he's going to leave it to Alex to do all of the work in terms of trying to find a pocket for the three and get shape for the four ball. Alex playing very close to the object ball, hoping to be able to cut the three ball into the corner and avoid the bottom left-hand corner pocket and somehow still get shape on the four. Okay, so Alex does manage to, to pocket the ball, but has set himself up for a bank, Cho choosing to pocket the three and not worry about the position for the four ball. Now planning a cross corner bank. Uh, his bank has come up short, although he might make it with two rails and on a Brunswick table, that would have gone in, but he's playing on the diamond table, so it's sitting in the corner. has ball in hand on the six ball and giving him his best chance to be able to convert this game and reduce this, the lead that, Alec, that Keith has. All right, with pretty good position on the seven ball. He's shooting the seven in the corner. Okay, and with that, Alex is able to increase his his score to 15 and cut the lead down once again to seven.
this is still pretty tough for, uh, for Alex. Because Alex has got to get 15 games, whereas Keith only needs to get eight. He's, he has the he has the break, and although they've been coming up dry, he's going to have to convert more of these games. Something that just hasn't been happening often enough. And. Alex has managed to make two balls on the break. In fact, I think this is the first rack that we've seen with two balls have gone in on a break. Alex has a clear line of sight for the two ball. There are no balls tied up. Okay, but Keith has a, a ball in hand shooting on the two. That was another opportunity that uh, Alex had uh, available to him that uh, he's allowed to let slip through. And this gives Keith yet another chance to convert. Again, with no balls tied up. Keith with an opportunity to, to play safe if he wants. Shoot the 5-7 uh, the combination if he prefers. Uh, Keith opting for the 5-7 combination, but since he did not convert, that brings Alex back to the table. This is a critical game for Alex. Alex has no games that he can afford to give up. Just focus on making the ball and keeping the position simple. Alex should be able to convert this game. this game, bringing his score up to 16. using one of his safety plays. Gets the table back and is uh, forced to figure out uh, a bank of some kind. Keith comes to the table with uh, a 
able to see the one ball. But by not converting it, that gives Alex ball in hand and an opportunity to finish out the rack. Remember, the two ball is caught in the corner. Upper right-hand corner partially hidden by the five ball. So getting, it's going to be necessary to get all the way down table in order to get shape. And stay down table. Okay. Looks like he's still able to Still able to see the ball. But it might be difficult for him to get on the two ball after making this shot. The five ball may obstruct his, uh, his pathway for proper position. And a great shot by Alex choosing top spin to be able to avoid hitting the five ball entirely and still just barely getting shape on the three. Okay. Shooting the five ball probably in the side. having to worry about position for the five. In and out of the pocket, the ball in hand goes to Keith. May have overrun his position just slightly on the six, shooting the six in the side. Electing to take the long shot, playing the seven in the bottom left hand corner. the cue stays on the table, as it looks like it will, then Keith is able to convert that score, bringing him within seven games of closing out this round. Back to the table after a brief break. He's 
making his way back to the table now with Alex breaking. Both players have settled on this uh, break position from the right-hand side pocket, uh, right-hand uh, right hand side of the table. Unfortunately for Alex, that has resulted in a scratch on the break. And Keith comes to the table with ball in hand, shooting at the one ball. Keith will be shooting over top of the three ball in order to get uh, his uh, shot in at the two and trying to come around three rails or two rails. Unfortunately, uh, he overcut that two ball, leaving Alex an opportunity to come back to the table. Alex comes back with ball in hand, shooting on the two. Alex's shot is just a little bit wide, giving Keith ball in hand access to shoot the two in the corner. Keith looking to play to three in the upper right hand corner and hold the cue ball to be able to shoot the four on the other side. A number of missed opportunities here as the table is going back and forth between Keith and Alex. Alex this time makes his ball in the corner pocket, holds the four ball, holds the cue ball rather, so he can shoot the four in the corner, but needs to come out towards the center of the table so that he can have access to the five in the same corner. And he manages to rattle the four ball in that corner pocket. This of course is a reminder of just how difficult this particular diamond table is. If you've ever played over here at Gotham Billiards, most people know that the diamond tables have deep shelves. This particular table is tighter than uh, the other diamond tables that are here. Okay, and a good shot on the five ball. Nice, a relatively straight shot on the six in the upper left hand corner. And it looks like he's going to ho hold the cue ball right there in order to be able to shoot the seven in the side. And another beat up goes up for Keith. As the score is now 16 to 24. Keith will be breaking. Looking at six games in order to finish the match. Alex needing 14 games in order to be able to finish this match.
Okay. Keith has managed to make the six ball in the upper corner pocket. And he has a clear line of sight to the one ball, shooting the length of the table, hoping to make the one in the bottom left-hand corner. Good shot. Manages to come towards the side pocket for shape on the two. And he's going to need to go forward in order to get some shape on the three ball. Okay, he does. He will at least be able to hit the three. We need to see what his plan is. Probably a good time for a safe. And he chooses to play a safe. Alex is going to have a tough time trying to get position on this three, uh, make contact with this three ball. Uh, the uh, long rail was cut off from him with the cue ball up against the five. He does have an opportunity for a, uh, a two rail position if he can get past the seven. And he does have an opportunity for a one rail safe on the opposite side if he's able to spin the cue ball and again avoid the seven. The seven ball looms large in all of his pathways to the three. So he does try to attempt to spin the cue ball. He does manage to get past the seven, but he misses the three ball and leaves Keith with ball in hand on the three. Keith is excellent shape on the four. And an open opportunity for the five ball. He moves a little closer to the four. He'll have to play a back cut in the upper left-hand corner. And now he has a choice to either cut this seven ball into the corner or side pocket. He's choosing to cut it into the corner. And he'll need to avoid the side pocket in order to claim the score. Keith moves one step closer and is now within five games. The score currently Alex Ross, 16. Keith Jawa here, 25. With Alex breaking. There's a possibility of the five ball going in the upper right hand corner, but Alex's break uh, once again comes up dry. Perhaps fortunate for Alex, there isn't much of a shot on the one ball. So when Keith comes to the table, we may see a, pip, a push. Although Keith is uh, indicating a possible uh, uh, carom. Unless unless the angle is such that he feels he can cut it. He, he may try to cut this one ball. Okay, Jeff, how is it going? Well, Keith is within five games. And Alex is still all the way down at 16. This is amazing. Uh, now, I've been away for a while. What's been happening? Has 
has Alex been messing up again and Keith just coming to the table and basically knocking in two balls? That's that's pretty much the pattern. The the irony is mm -hmm. that the shots where Alex simply needs to cinch the ball and not worry about his uh, his shape mm -hmm. have been the ones that he's been missing. Mm. And unfortunately, that's happened too many times on uh, either the five or the six ball, leaving Keith the ball in hand opportunity on either the five or the six going to seven. Has he tied up any balls? There haven't been too many tie-ups. Uh, in fact, that 1-7 tie-up was probably the, the closest that uh, there has been to a tie-up, which uh, Alex, um, which Keith thought he would be able to cut in, but because he missed it, uh, brings Alex back to the table. But the shot you just saw there is a good illustration of what's been happening for Alex. Um, uh, relatively simple shot, not having to worry about position, and then just sort of rattling the ball. Into well, the I, I, and I don't think he put um, a lot of uh, thought into that shot because right now Keith just played. That was the two ball, and Keith is going. He's on the three right now. Mm -hmm. But Alex played uh, the two before, and he was still up table. There's no way he would have been able to get to that three ball from there. So he didn't put a lot of thought into it. I think he just went down and he fired away. He needs to start thinking about exactly how he's going to execute each pattern and still find a way to get back into this. Because even if he doesn't win the match, he needs to gather as much points. points right? Yes, he needs those points. He needs those points. Well, for some people who are not accustomed to playing lengthy races, this may be... Um where some of the fatigue sets in that some of the other players that came up have talked about. This is a this is a much more stressful game than some people think. Seven ball is not just all about offense. You really have to think about Absolutely. how you're going to play your defense because you have limited uh, opportunities to play uh, defensive shots like safeties and pushes. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a good shot. But you see, he, he pulled back the ball, and now he... he well, he'll be able to make the six from wherever. He's, he's, he's going to have to... He might uh, elect to shoot inside in order to keep the cue ball relatively close to the six. But he, he had spotted up a while ago as if he's going to try to hold this ball. I, I wouldn't try to hold this ball, you know? I would probably do what you said with a little inside but hit the rail. And yeah, that's not going to help. No, but this is not a bad miss either. It's not a bad miss. Uh, Keith has to come up table. Oh, he played a safe. That was a safe. Well, it might have helped him because they were... This is the point in the game where uh, where things have been changing hands quite a bit. And so having ball in hand on the five ball is a pretty good position to be in in a game of seven ball. Well, he's right-handed, so he needs to come back to the center of the table this, or keep the cue ball on the, the left rail. Hey, I don't like this. Now he has to right. stretch. Well, well, he should be able to reach this. It's within a diamond of the center of the table. Yeah, but he's stretching. You just want to bump it and come off a little bit. Okay, good. Now, if you notice, the cue ball is closer to the rail than the object ball. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have to... It's a little bit of a back cut. Yeah, it's a true. back cut. And he's down... How many points is he down? Oh, he's down uh, nine, nine point. points. So he's he's gonna have he this needs is this game. Yeah, this is this is a pressure shot right here. He needs to make this, and he does. And he does. That was a wonderful shot.
And we're back, and as I look over to my right, I see Libby falling asleep. The lady, a few words. I really want to thank her, though, because if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have gotten the stream up and running. Also, I want to thank Jeff here. If it wasn't for Jeff, we wouldn't have a stream at all. <laughs> we were researching for months before we came up with a solution. <laughs> well, uh, we, we, we do have it now for the benefit of those folks who are unable to make it here to Gotham. Right. Oh. Although, if you are at, at all able to make it to Gotham City Billiards, you, should, you owe it to yourself to come out here. This, it's in this Gravesend section of Brooklyn, uh, off of Avenue U, uh, 93 Avenue U, for those of you who uh, have access to Google or GPS, look it up, find your way out here. It's a, it's a great pool room. Yeah, uh, It's absolutely a wonderful pool room. I remember the first time coming in here, I couldn't believe the, how they took uh, care of the equipment. But... I'm going to say something to you that is weird. The place that I admire the most in this in this facility, don't laugh, is the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It is immaculate. They just keep it clean. Yes, you know? they do. And it, I mean, I've been to many pool halls, and there's there's some pool halls when you get there, if you have to use the bathroom, you have to go in like you're on a you're on undercover. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Like it's a toxic pull out, waste site. Yeah, pull out your gun because something might jump at you. But this place is just immaculate. But I wouldn't expect anything um, less from 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 Izzy and Kevin, the owners of this facility. It's 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 you can see that it's a family business and they treat it as such. Uh, the equipment is first class, and that's why I'm I'm happy that they gave us the opportunity to actually host this uh, this event down here. Yes, yes, they take good care of the equipment. They take good care of their customers. And this is uh, one of the pool halls I like coming to the most here in Brooklyn. Keith coming back to the table after a missed opportunity on the three ball. So Keith broke dry, but after a couple of exchanges, here he is back at the table with ball in hand on the three and an opportunity to put up another bead. You shouldn't have to do much here with the three ball, just, just stop the cue right there. And now if he's able to pocket the Four in the side, and and float the cue for position on the five. He may have may have run a little farther than he had wanted. Uh, he can play the five in the corner. It does pass the seven if he wants to do that, in order to keep the cue ball down at that end of the table. If he goes in the side pocket, he is going to have to go down and back in order to get shape on the six. So he is elected for the longer cue position and has come up pretty straight on the six ball, playing the six in a corner with a slight angle. All right, uh, the cue ball was struck pretty well and He's able to draw himself into a uh, seven ball corner shot in the upper left hand corner. Unfortunately, he will be handing the table back to Alex. And Alex has another opportunity to close the gap a little bit. Alex shooting a ball in hand on the seven. Putting up another bead, making his score 18 to Keith's 25. Good position for Alex to be in because he's breaking. Now if he can just convert the break 
Uh, his best opportunity, the way the balls are, are racked, is to make this three ball in the corner. But for some reason, he's been missing that, uh, that, that upper right-hand corner pocket. Definitely gonna have to. He's definitely gonna have to do some homework on these uh, uh, w when he gets back to uh, his regular practice sessions. He's gonna have to do some homework on these breaks. And Keith making a great shot on the. He's making a great shot on the on the one, gave himself shape for the two ball, and now he's having pocketed the two in the corner. Excellent shape on the three. Yes, just, he... just needs to drop it in. Nothing fancy here. I uh, see. She's shooting well. And it looks like we have another finish. Uh, Lionel, Lionel, and Omar. And we're just going to ask uh, oh, Lionel to come into the booth for a few minutes while Jeff uh, have a little talk with him. Okay, so as another uh, match completes, we have uh, another uh, one of the uh, competitors uh, having just finished his match. And I'll... Uh, I'll ask you, uh, how, do you how did you feel about the uh, the match now that it's over? I felt pretty good about it. Uh, it was just a matter, as usual, you have to stay focused. And with seven ball, it's such a high risk, high reward game that it's almost like a practice drill. You almost have to run out, otherwise mm -hmm. your opponent gets ball in hand. And with the one safety, it's almost a matter of whoever calls the safety first is going to lose unless they put you in a lockup safety because if you're able to kick at the ball and you call safety back and then you end up leaving them with some low percentage shot they're probably going to miss it and then you get ball in hand and if there's just four balls left on the table you just run them out so seven ball is almost like a practice drill well there are certainly some people that feel uh that way about seven ball that it's uh, like a practice drill uh, not everyone feels that way uh, some folks have certainly been feeling the pressure well I'm, I'm not saying practice drill as if it's easy but I mean it there's six balls so it's not like ten ball where after you run one or two balls you're thinking man I have eight balls to go and it's it's just once if you get one ball on the break or your opponent gets a ball on the break there's only um, only five balls left and then you shoot two or three and it's almost like the table's empty so you're almost supposed to get out and so that makes it well well you're certainly right there not because there are not as many balls on a table there are far fewer obstacles there is tremendous pressure however to be offensive in in, in order to make make the ball because if you miss a shot you're basically handing over ball in hand to your opponent Exactly. Have you played seven ball uh, before this tournament? No, this was my first time. Okay. I've, I've seen it played. I've seen the professionals play it where they just run out like it's a, like there's nothing to it. Mm -hmm. But I had never played it myself. I actually enjoyed it. It was, it was a lot of pressure, you're right. Well, well good. I'm glad you had a chance to, uh, to play it here in the, uh, in the Mega Bucks uh, uh, Marathon uh, tournament. Thanks, I, and I appreciate Megabucks for putting on these tournaments. It's extremely novel. 30, uh, race to 30 is, I guess after this tournament, if you're fortunate enough to play in it, after this, the regular 
league matches are going to seem far less stressful, far less. I get nervous when I play, so I guess I'm not going to get as nervous. I mean, some it's sometimes I get nervous, sometimes I don't, but usually I, I get a little bit nervous. Sometimes I'm nervous and I don't even realize it. Okay, well, well, uh, since this is your first time playing uh, seven ball and there are other formats uh, that are available, which of the other formats uh, are you looking forward to playing? Uh, uh, the eight ball, the nine ball, 10, one pocket straight pull. Do you have one that you're looking forward to playing? Eight ball is always my favorite. I'll probably choose eight ball any day of the week. Okay. Um, but uh, straight pool and one pocket, I've never played either officially. Okay. I've messed around, played around yes. with um, with straight pool, but one pocket I've never played, even though I enjoy watching it. If I watch a video on YouTube and see a professional play, I enjoy watching that because it's a strategic game, and I tend to try to be strategic if I can. It's not always successful. But as far as um, eight ball, I'm definitely looking forward to that because you get to be creative. And um, I think if you could play the rotation games well, then eight ball is a lot easier because with eight ball, you could change your pattern if you get out of position. But with the rotation games, you're stuck with it. So your cue ball control has to be so much better. So therefore, if you can get good at rotation games, your eight ball play will be a lot better as well. Well, if eight ball is in my uh, opinion, if eight ball is your preferred game, then I think you're in luck, uh, uh, Vince. Uh, uh, what happens? What is our next round? Oh well, coming up will will be eight ball, and um, it will be a race to thirty in that uh, format too. So, uh, Lionel, you're definitely going to enjoy that. Um, I had a question though. Um, uh, you and uh, Omar, Omar rather, were among the two qualifiers to get into this. Uh, to get into this event yes and it just happened that you picked him in the draw right i was i was thinking something weird like that might happen <laughs> but then i was saying no that's not what are the odds of that and then omar came up to me he seems to be psychic or something because during the uh qualifier he was up to date with who's gonna play who in the next round and then and then earlier right before the match he said we're gonna be playing and I said, well, that's interesting. So I just, I just tried not to, I try not to be superstitious or anything like that. I just go in, try to make my shots, and see what happens. Okay. Now we have the the, the matchups for the second round. Um, do you, do you want to know who you're gonna be playing? It doesn't really matter, but you <laughs> could tell, you could tell me anyways, I guess. Bernard, Bernardo Ashby, you're going to be playing him. He's on table five now. Okay. Uh, All right, so he's still in the middle of his uh, yeah, first he, round match. He's still in the so middle. So you have an opportunity to rest up a little uh, and uh, be prepared for your match against Bernardo when, uh, uh, when we begin the second round. Okay. So it's, with me, it's kind of a matter of trying to stay mentally prepared. I'm not physically, I'm not tired, at least not yet. But mentally, when you're trying to focus so much to, to run the balls, that's when... To play, so I'm trying to deal with that. Okay. But as as I try to look at the challenge as a, an opportunity, because I'm thinking that um, if I could run out the balls, 30 racks, if I could run the balls out, then it should, in theory, become easier and easier as you go, because it's a matter of getting more experience. But it's all theory, so I'm just trying to think as positively as possible. Okay. Okay, well, we certainly look forward to seeing you on some of the, uh, 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 we wish you luck in, in, in future rounds. Thank Hopefully you. we'll see you on one of the upcoming uh, 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 matches uh, on the stream table. Sure, possible. We look forward to seeing you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
So we have another uh, competitor who has just uh, completed his match, and I'm going to ask him to introduce himself. Hello, hello, hello. It's uh, Clayton Webster. Okay, Clayton, uh, you just finished your uh, seven round, uh, your, your uh, seven ball round, okay, and uh, you, 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 you won your match, and that's great. Uh, how do you feel about, um, about seven ball now that you got into your first round? Seven ball, that's a real tricky, uh, tricky game, you know. Okay. Um, one mistake, that could be the end, you know. Well, I didn't, I didn't figure it out until the end. You know? like, why even shoot at the seven ball? Well, well, Play the fact that you have thirty games to figure it out. Exactly. It, uh, hopefully that helps. That's one of the nice things about the Mega Bucks League, is the fact that these are relatively long races. You get plenty of opportunity to shoot pool. Um, how do you feel about the league in uh, in general? Oh, I love it myself. Um, you know, everybody has a little their kinks to get out. You know, but mm -hmm. I love it myself. I like the com competition, um, professionalism. That's that's the most thing that works for me. Yes, yes. Well, another another feature of uh, this league and this tournament in particular is the fact that uh, people get to play multiple uh, formats, and so we just finished the seven ball format. What we have coming up is uh, is eight ball in the next round. But uh, do you have a particular pool discipline that you uh, are looking forward to in this tournament? Well, I, I'm I'm a nine ball kind of guy, you know. Uh, eight ball I can play. I just prefer the nine ball. Ten okay. ball is kind of new, you know. Okay. But it, it falls under the same lines as you know nine ball. Okay, well, it it, it uh, you're in luck because nine ball is certainly a part of this tournament. And once we finish with the eight ball round, which is next, the round that comes up afterwards is nine ball. So I want to wish you well in the tournament. Hopefully we get to see you um, playing on the stream table so that we can see uh, you in action uh, uh, playing nine ball. I look forward to, uh, to seeing that if that's at all possible. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, I want to thank you for coming over to the uh, to the table and uh, chat with us, and uh, good luck to you in the uh, uh, in the rest of the uh, the tournament. And uh, 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 thank you very much for uh, uh, once again for stopping by. Thanks. 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 Keith is closing in, trying to close out this tournament. Shooting on the four ball with, uh, with, with pretty much a natural position for the five and the six. As long as he remains composed, he should be able to finish out this, um, uh, this rack and bring him uh, just one step closer to being able to complete this round. Okay, good two reel position on the six. There is a slight angle, so he's gonna have to worry about uh, getting too close to the seven. Okay, but he has managed to hold the cue ball and is shooting on the seven ball now, bringing him one step closer. Well, Keith, Keith now just needing two more games in order to be able to finish this, uh, this match. Alex breaking.
Alex is still struggling on this break. Uh, uh, coming up dry. Leaving uh, Keith an open shot on the one ball. is in a position where he must he must close this rack out. And he's going to have to struggle to block out some of the distractions like the person who walked right up on him while he was shooting at this two ball. Okay. So with that ball down can play the three in the side, possibly bump into the four in order to give himself a sh some position to play the four in the corner. Okay, slight angle. So he may have to he may have to do a little bit of work here in order to give himself the position he needs for the five. bit of a challenge. If he can pass the six ball, then he should have a good angle on the five. And just focus on making the ball. I have natural position for six in the side. comes to the table with uh, five ball in hand. Looking to play the five on the side and possibly draw off a position on the six. has one more chance at this. He really needs to make this count. Keith is one step away from the hill. By playing the uh, six in the corner, he should be able to get the one rail position that he needs to shoot the seven. using draw, he came straight down the table to just past the center of the table. He might need to stretch for a little bit, reaching over the table in order to get shape that he needs to, to deposit this seven ball in the corner. Cleanly struck, seven ball down, and Alex goes to 20. With Keith, one step away from the hill. <laughs> Keith is ready to break.
Phoenix has a chance here. the three ball down the rail is probably the most difficult shot of this rack. And he has shot it well, giving himself shape on the four ball and on the correct side. He'll need to make this ball and hold the cue to avoid the side pocket. Okay, using two rails, he's giving himself a shot at the six ball. Looks like he is preparing to shoot the six in the corner. And the table goes back to Keith with ball in hand on the six. Keith is the first one to get to the hill. Alex is not out of this, but it's not looking that great for him. The score is 20 to 29. Keith needs one more. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks.
approximately two balls away from ending this match. And Alex has one more chance to uh, close up the gap with ball in hand on the six. But he needs to make these two, because if he misses, then this match is over. Okay. So it looks like... Uh, Keith has ball in hand on a six. Yeah, this could with, be it. With ball in hand. And uh, on the hill. Yeah. Uh, normally I'd say this is missable, but he's shooting very confident in this match. So I expect him to make it. And that's it. Oh, that's the match. Yep, up next. Ooh, who do we got up next?